My next guest this morning, she is a licensed certified travel counselor. Now, she is involved in so many nonprofit organizations down here. She led and organized the first original tour to Cuba for the Key West Botanical Gardens. There are future tours up ahead, and she has all the information for us this morning. Caroline, it's a pleasure having you on the show thank today. Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> now, you are such a busy woman, so thank you for taking oh, the time welcome. to do this. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And Let's good talk. morning, Florida Keys. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your background as a travel counselor, Caroline. Well, let's see. It will date me, but um, <laughs> I have been in the travel business uh, for 37 years, probably a little bit over than that. And um, I have been in the business so long that we used to have to make our travel reservations by looking in a book, and I would tell you the airplane schedule. Then we would call on the telephone to the airline and make the reservation. Then we would call the customer back, and then we would handwrite the ticket, and then we would hand them the ticket physically. And so we, um, at night, the next phase was the tickets would come through on a teleticketer. So that was our next phase. And then the computers, we didn't know what we were going to do when we got computers. Mm -hmm. And then um, we didn't know what we were going to do when we had no tickets, ticketless. Right. Right. So it's been um, a huge, huge involvement in my almost four decades of being in the travel <laughs> business. But I do not only airplane tickets, but I do group tours. I do cruises, I, you know, I do the whole, all of, all of travel reservations. And now you led the original educational tour to Cuba, Caroline. How did that all come about? Well, as you mentioned, I'm involved in a lot of um, local organizations here, uh, nonprofits, and the Key West Botanical Garden is very near and dear to my heart. And I got involved in the gardens and it's just such a wonderful gem that we have it's just beautiful and they've done such wonderful things there and it's something that a lot of us here in key west forget to take the time out to go and see but um we wanted to go to our sister island which is so close and most folks know that it's not legal to travel to cuba but it is the licenses have opened up over the last two years so that um if you have educational trips, um, like for instance, the Key West baseball team, I think was in the paper a couple weeks ago, or trying to are trying to get a team to go over to Cuba. Our soccer team went over to Cuba, and I deal directly with OFAC, which is the Office of Foreign Affairs, and they have opened up their licensing. And so, if you have a special interest group, they st they most of the time will allow you to have a license to go over to Cuba now. That's exciting. It then. is very exciting, and it's getting a little bit bigger and bigger. So I think, you know, Key West is a wonderful gateway, as, of course, history has shown. But mm -hmm. so we need to all be very aware of it. And the country of Cuba is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. And the people are just so happy. Mm -hmm. They're just happy, happy people. It's a huge island. Mm -hmm. I've only seen half of it. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take care of that on our tours. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so important to make sure that people are aware that you can make it over there and to be able to see it in an educational tour. I'm sure that's an amazing experience. That it is. And what forget. I do for my clients is for the botanical gardens, when we go over to Cuba on our license, what we do is we visit different gardens that are there. Mm -hmm. Harvard University, I believe in 1899, opened a, a palm garden over in, in Cuba. And there's just acres and acres and acres of different types of palm trees that are just indigenous of Cuba. We don't have those palm trees in the United States. So we go and visit there. We go up to these orchid gardens and there's acres and acres of orchids growing. And there are types of orchids that we don't have in the United States. So all of, you know, this tour that I set up is specifically to go visit gardens and and we do the tobacco farms we see where the cigars are made mm -hmm. and we do all the normal sightseeing as well we go to the museums um we go to the tropicana which was it's like going back stepping right back into the 50s Sounds, it's, sounds beautiful. And you do have some upcoming tours scheduled for Cuba. I do. We have I I've made I've customized three separate itineraries. One of them is the western province that goes out to the tip of Cuba which faces us um, up into the mountains and then over to um, Cienfuegos and back to Havana. Mm -hmm. We have one for Havana only four nights and then we have an itinerary where we're going to fly into Santiago and go all the way to the length of the island and come out of Havana. 
sounds beautiful. And yes. can anybody get involved in this, Caroline? They can. We have to get involved with the garden. So if they would just contact me on the email address, then I'll tell them how to do that. Great. But we are we definitely have we have specific strict rulings that we have to adhere to. You have me sold on one. Of the yes, tours, it's so. <laughs> so much fun, and it's our it's our sister island. Wonderful. Well, yes. thank you for being on this You're morning welcome. and sharing this information. Thank and thank you, everybody, for tuning in with me today. I hope that you'll be able to join me again tomorrow at 7 a.m. and then back at 8.30 a.m. Take care, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. It'll be okay.